Welcome into Jets Nation Radio. I'm Angus Hout. Happy New Year, Sam Brownell. How's it going? Happy New Year. I'm wonderful. You know why I'm wonderful? Is it because the Oilers lost to the to Connor Hellebuck last night? It's because the Jets beat the Oilers last night. Let, let's be honest. That was 99% Connor Hellebuck. Yeah. I uh, yeah. The uh the replies, the mentions, Oilers fans hate Connor Hellebuck. Yeah, sucks. Yeah. Because they've been struggling to find a goalie for two decades. Right. And it's just like my old man. I, I went to Alberta for Christmas and my old man, he's an Oilers fan. And actually, if you're uh, watching this on YouTube, you can see my jersey, which uh, the old man bought me. So loyal listener, Pete, probably my favorite listener. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I just like he and I were talking about the Oilers. And I was just like, I remember this conversation from four years ago. The Oilers have no scoring depth. Their goaltending tandem is meh at best. And oh, look, we're relying on Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, who wasn't in the lineup last night. Like, just I ridiculous. actually saw the most wild stat um, yesterday. It was from the Kraken Oilers game, straying a little bit from the Jets. But the top five Oilers had more points than all the Kraken's player, all the Kraken players that they dressed. Wow. The next 18 players were Kraken. And then the rest of the Oilers lineup. That's not even shocking. Cause I think like wild. It's how is that possible? I don't know. And it's like, I feel bad for Oilers fans because they're watching McDavid and Dreisaitl. I'm going to say they're the best two players on the planet. And Yet you can't get scoring from Derek Ryan and the guy that was scoring on your third line and Clem Costin was the only guy who could score last night. And it was a beautiful Ooh. goal or no, there's yeah, two goals. tough, tough ending to the game for him. Yeah. That was scary. Hopefully like, he's okay. Yeah. Ugh, ugh, I don't know. That knee might be a little messed up and they might be without him for a bit. Yeah. It almost looked like maybe a groin thing. Just the way he went in. Oh, I look, I thought his knee buckled on that. But okay. Maybe I thought it was like, he went in in his legs. He kind of like did the splits against the, against he, the boards. It might I have thought. been a multiple injury know. thing because like that was just a ba- like and no one's to blame on that. Like I don't want to be. I think it was Samberg who went into that one. Yeah, they were just fighting for the puck. I think yeah. he just lost his edge. Yeah, it just unfortunate. But that's hockey. But uh, before the um, before the Christmas break, there when we were playing Washington and Johansson took a puck to the face, I was just like. I can't believe this kind that of was, thing. That uh, was Carlson. Carlson, sorry. Uh, I knew it was one of their better players. But uh, yeah, I just, I can't believe this doesn't happen more often in the NHL. Because like guys are playing with cages and visors. Well, I know they have to play with visors all the time now. But cages up until, you know, they're almost 20 sometimes. Yeah, I, it is. I think that guys are just so good at controlling the puck. that, yeah. Like that, that uh, Carlson one was. That was free. Rough. Because I, th- I think it was, the puck was just on its edge. Like, it wasn't a, a flat pass that um, Dylan got. Because it didn't get tipped or anything. It was straight to Carlson's face. I hope he's okay. I haven't heard it. I know last I heard he had just been released from the hospital to team doctors. Um, so I, I haven't heard anything else. But hopefully he's doing okay. I'm, I'm sure it'll be a little while before he's back. But Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, you think like Brian Little was the kind of the last guy who took one high and that was friendly fire too that was friendly fire but you got like just how many weird tips how many weird just angle shots happen all the time it's like i can't believe more guys aren't mucked up there and no obviously you don't want that to happen but it's scary i guess ultimately it's it's this much it's not a huge space no no but every now and then something weird does happen yeah uh what's the coolest thing you got for christmas this year well, uh, I got a lot of great clothes, very happy about, nice. um, and my mom would kill me if she, if I didn't say that. So shout out Michelle, uh, another loyal <laughs> listener. Bless her heart. Um, but as far as the coolest, uh, my sister got me a putting green for my apartment. Like oh, a little, sweet. yeah. Uh, so you're going to so, be good to go to Dolphin Lake next summer and just tear yeah, it up hopefully I won't money. be. Hopefully I won't be a complete mess. Uh, for putting next year it, it actually <laughs> hasn't come yet uh it's getting delivered to my place in dauphin but you know around christmas time right. everything's kind of taking a little longer so yeah yeah, yeah looking forward that. to that 
other than the other than the beautiful reverse retro you got on right now what uh what, what did you get uh not a whole lot from uh like my dad's side of the or from my alberta family so we were just it was like come home for christmas we'll pay for your gas and we'll make sure you come home so uh that that was it and honestly like we had our big boxing day thing at my grandparents place we had 35 of us there i think wow and it was just like one of those days where nobody said it but we all put our phones away for the entire time that we were there and it just like we were talking it's like nobody got any photos this is so strange but like <laughs> i i had a fantastic time so just seeing my family uh my old man got me two two jets jerseys i ended up finding a 1980s jets jersey 80s 90s jersey the one with the same logo as this, so it has to be a 90s one. I think a 90s, yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, I know I saw my mom, and she made me a bunch of baking, so that was fantastic. Thanks. Nice. Uh, I guess I also went home for Christmas and saw my family. Yeah. I guess if you're, I should probably have said that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't have to drive through Saskatchewan. My God, I hate that drive so much. True, I just had to drive to Winnipeg. Yeah, it's only three and a half hours. <laughs> uh Okay, so when everyone gets healthy, let's say we get to March 1st and we have a fully healthy Jets lineup. Who is still with the Jets? That's so tough. Or let's let's make it easy. Who are you cutting? Who's your first three cuts? First three cuts. Well, it, what I would do or what Bones is going to do? What would you do? Oh, that's tough. Um, okay, what would Bones do? Let's make I feel like Isamon's been coming in and out a bit. Yeah. Um, we haven't been seeing him a ton, so I'd say probably him. I thought Reichel looked solid last night, but he would obviously be one of the guys going down first. Um, I've really liked Stenlin's game. Yeah, I don't he's... think Stenlin's going anywhere. I don't know. It's, it's really hard. Like Harkins, maybe. Yeah, I think Harkins would be one of my guys. Also, Axel Johnson Fialvi. Like, I know he works his butt off. I just don't know if he necessarily has the skill to remain in the NHL on a consistent basis. I like I like Fialvi's game. Um, I'd say Coleman maybe. Yeah, I, I, I haven't I, built up any connection to him. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's like Adam Brooks. You're like, oh, cool, and you'll promptly forget about him. Brooks, there was a bit more because he's a Winnipeg guy. Yeah, but, I guess uh, so. I mean, only Tony. Yeah. It's just one of those waiver pickups i do think we're gonna lose at least one or two players on waivers though yeah unfortunately we'll we'll see how it turns out maybe teams at the time guys are getting sent down teams aren't looking but uh it'll be interesting to see how that how that works out so let's like let's run through the forward lines real quick okay give me when yeah. when guys are healthy so your top line is probably shifley let, let's just go with the Shifley Wheeler Perfetti line. Yeah. And, and then, then Connor Dubois Ehlers. Yeah. So that's pretty easy. You got Adam Lowry centering your third line with, yeah, with Baron. Baron on one side. I listen, I know Appleton is like, well, he's been here the longest. So thus he get he automatically gets it. But I would argue for Saku Manalainen. I would too. <laughs> Ooh, I wow. would too. Huge debate on this one this time. Uh, yeah. And, like, um, uh, <sighs> I Appleton might be a bubble guy now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think he's a part of the guys you can package up and send like, away. I, I've really, really liked Stenland's game, and I don't think he should be going anywhere. I think he and uh, Gustafson make a great defensive shutdown fourth line. Yeah. So if you can start getting some scoring out of your third line, because your fourth line can be that shutdown like Lowry has needed to be for ever. Yeah. That's unreal. Yeah, so I mean, you could get a little bit more scoring out of that third line, and then who are you doing? Okay, and then your left side. Bottom so, line. so I think the the four like the fourth line, I would go Stenland, Gustafson, and then you're I guess rotating probably Appleton, Gagne, maybe AJF. I don't yeah. know how many forwards they can keep, um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that makes. I, sense. I know I'm probably missing someone, so that sends Isamont, Harkins, Reichel, Coleman down. Yes, I feel there's probably somebody missing here. I just am blanking hard. I and uh, you know what? Out of all the guys, I wouldn't want to lose. Like on waivers, those guys like wouldn't be the end of the world. No, Harkins would suck. Isamont would suck. Yeah, 
but you also know that those guys could go to like every team's got a Jansen Harkins though, a guy that you've brought up. He's That's not true. going to make you go crazy, but you know, he's got the potential in him. Yeah. So I, I don't think you're losing Harkins. You might lose Axel Johnson of the Albi. I think that's probably the guy you lose. I don't. Th- I think he would be a bubble guy. They keep. Okay. Yeah, he. I don't know. He can penalty kill. Bones likes that. Um, yeah. But I guess they've got a ton. Like when Lowry, Stenland, uh, Gustafson, Menelainen, even Baron, they can all penalty kill. Mm-hmm. Like we've so, got an abundance of penalty killers. So like when yeah. the Jets do, when when we get to trade deadline day, like the Jets have multiple options to be like. We'll package you three bottom six guys and give us whomever. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Uh, I don't know how many people are going to want those. I guess those depth guys, if they're young enough, people might want them. Yeah, but um, like you've seen potential in Harkins, and I'm sure you could swindle a GM to be like, listen, if you put him on your in your top six, he might show up for you. Yeah, to a team like like, Arizona or something. (laughs) (laughs) Where are we going to get out of there? I think everyone's picked that place clean minus Clayton Keller. Oh, isn't Clayton Keller still there? Yeah, he is. But I think they've like, I think he's agreed to stick around with them long term. Be like, listen, I'll stick stick this out. He just, he probably just likes living in the desert. I don't blame him. I mean, if I'm getting paid seven schmill a year, whatever he's making, as long as you enjoy yourself out there, you only exactly. got to think about hockey for an hour a day. <laughs> and you can golf year round. Yeah. You Get play in front of a, a rowdy small crowd. Yeah. Did you see that big fight before? And Christmas? Connor Bedard's going to be your teammate. Oh, man. That, I, that, that kid's is special. Unbelievable what that guy can do. He's not even shooting the puck anymore, and he's the best shot on the team. Yeah. He's just setting guys up. I think it's just because it's too easy of a tournament. Uh, do you think Bedard is a point to game player next year in the NHL? That's it's tough to know exactly how it's going to translate, but he absolutely could be. And it also depends on who he's playing with. Yeah. Like if he's out there, if he's hung out to dry by himself, no. But if he goes to Chicago and he's playing with Patrick Kane, yeah. Like it, it all depends. Like, you know, he he's going to be on a team's top line next year because yeah. the team who gets him is going to suck. Um, you know what? I'd be interested to see him go to Vancouver. I think Vancouver would be the best landing spot for Connor Bedard. I don't think they're really close right now. I was actually looking at the, looking at the standings before we started today. So, but like Vancouver has got a ton of injuries as well. They've got a good, a decent young core. Like I think Bedard could, I I think out of the, the bad teams in the NHL, that'd be the best one for him to end up on. So Chicago's dead last with 20 points. Then Anaheim and Columbus both have 24, San Jose 29, Arizona 31. I hope he ends up in Columbus because they're the most likely Eastern Conference team to get that last pick. And I don't want to see him a couple times a year. Well, I mean, we're going to see not him more. twice a year no matter what. So. True. True. As, but if you can avoid I don't, I don't want him, him I don't the... want him to go to Chicago, Arizona, Anyone basically in the central. Could you imagine Those, Nashville just blowing it for the last half of the season and just picking him up? You never know. Like that that's the beauty of the draft lottery. It's it's a curse and a blessing, but it would be so funny to see him end up on a team like Nashville. Not for us, obviously, but you know, in in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I so I think I I wouldn't mind seeing him on Vancouver. Um he's from there. It would make my brother-in-law happy. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like, like, if he's going to end up on a Canadian team. You know, yeah, that's always good to that see, has too. been sucking for a while, and I don't have a beef with And if, they, if Vancouver gets that low but doesn't completely blow up, like, they have some decent young pieces. Yeah. I mean, imagine a power play with Elias Patterson, Quinn Hughes, Connor Bedard, Brock Besser. Br- Besser's going to be gone, but you got JT Miller. Yeah. Like... Yeah, that would be that would be scary. Well, and it's so funny. I, I'd watch a replay, but if you watch Connor Bedard's eyes, he squints and almost shuts them on every shot. It's like he's putting every ounce of power in his body into his shot, including just like squeezing his eyes shut. Yeah, it's so. And cool he just picks corners. It's insane. Yeah, and he looks so like 
It's not even like, like when you watch McDavid, he, you can watch him turn it on and be like, okay, now I'm going to score. Where Connor Bedard is just like, okay, I'll flick this towards the net. And oh, look, it's in. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And His release is disgusting. Un- unbelievable. So it's going to be 17 years old. Oh, yeah. It's going to be scary to see that guy in the NHL in five yeah, years. Yeah. He's, uh, He's going to do some damage in the league. That's yeah. for sure. So we can just, if you, if you could send some good vibes that he doesn't end up in a central division in the central division, we'll be fine. Please, please. Although we held our own against that Connor McDavid guy the year we had to see him 10 times. So this is true. This is true. That's because Neil Pionk had an out of body experience that year in the playoffs. I think that guy just like sees orange and blue is like nah i hate these colors i'm gonna just screw this guy over. yeah like because he amazing. sucks everywhere else yeah he's well, having yeah. such a bad year yeah and it's it's so disappointing to see because it's like i want to believe in neil pionk and like great for his two points last night like that was a nice ripper he could have had like i thought he had that second one as well yeah we should uh try and trade him while he still has some value who's try and get a top six forward yeah, I don't know. Someone's yeah. dumb enough. Pooley RV for Pionk. Oh man, that's. I feel like that's such an overpayment for Pooley RV. Yeah. Well, no, we need something coming back too. Yeah, yeah, we would. Because we'd have to make that money work out. We'd have to figure out a way for the Oilers to like give us a little bit too much cap. But then, then we wouldn't be able if we ran into the Oilers in the playoffs. We wouldn't have Pionk to shut down McDavid. That's true, but like the Oilers aren't going to make the third round. True, yeah, because that's unless unless they cross over, that's the earliest we could. uh, Yeah, but like even still, they could. They actually could cross over because they are in the wild card right now. They are, but they would have to beat Dallas or uh, well, we could be in top spot hypothetically by the end of the season. So. Why not? I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. I'd fly out to Edmonton and proudly wear my Jets gear and just run my mouth. So it's what you do best. It's really what I do best. I I got called out for it while we were playing board games with some of my family. They're like, whoa, what happened to you? It's like, yeah, I just got mean lately. So I'm sure I'd get my ass kicked out on White Ave some night. Okay, so Sam Gagne has played 1,001 games. I told you we're doing some Sam Gagne trivia. Oh, God. First off, what team and what year was he drafted? Edmonton. Yeah. Um, 2000. Trying to do the math. And six. 2007. I almost said a bad word. I was really close. <laughs> uh, Sam Gagne scored eight points against which team? Oh, no. They talked about it so much. <laughs> they were showing highlights. What conference? The Western Conference. Was it Vancouver? Nope. I'll give you three. Um... Was it, is it Central Division? Yes, but now you've lost a question or a, an answer, so. Minnesota. No, it was the Chicago Blackhawks. Ah. Yes. I'm failing this miserably. You are. I thought that we'd, you'd be just uh, nailing these. These are uh, Why? softball you're the questions. You're the Sam Gagne stan. I, I, I just have I'm... the same name as the guy. <laughs> uh, Sam Gagne has fought against one other Jet. Who is it? Fought? Yes, he fought a jet. A current jet. A current jet. They they were playing on different teams at the time. Sam Gagne would... was a, a Vancouver Canuck. A Canuck? Yes. What year was he a Canuck? Uh... Like, the Jets have had quite a bit of turnover. And was the player on the Jets at the time? No. This oh. player was playing for the Dallas Stars at the time. Oh, it wouldn't have been Brendan Dillon. It was Brendan Dillon. Good for gags. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, wow. That, that guy's smaller than me, and I wouldn't. I, I never would have gone with Dillon. You gave it away by saying Dallas, because yeah. I'm pretty sure he's the only Jet that played on Dallas. But uh, <laughs> wow, good for good for gags. Yes, that was fantastic. Uh, 
which uh no that one's too hard i, I realize that now oh let's uh, hear it okay well, i was gonna say which two ahl teams has he played for okay um which two ahl teams are they still ahl teams because uh, the ahl moves around a lot one of them definitely is uh oh, oh wait i'm sorry i lied uh he's played for three. Oh, yes because I feel like AHL teams move around so much. So, uh, so one of them is no longer a team. Okay, so it. Ooh, ooh, Jesus! It wouldn't have been uh, Bakersfield. Um, who? It was Cleveland. Nope. No, he didn't. Wasn't down. What about uh, the Phantoms? Yes, he played for the Phantoms. Okay. Um, who were the? Was it Utica Comets? No, he actually never played for the Utica Comets. Even what, did he, he ever play for the Canucks AHL team? So this is this is why I asked this question. So Sam Gagne was property of the Vancouver Canucks, but being an Ontario boy, uh, he wasn't mm. overly excited to go down to the AHL in Utica. And I want to say it was Jason Spezza had a connection to someone in the Canucks, and he called them up and was like, Hey, that Sam Gagne guy, can you send him to the Marlies? Like, you know, so he belonged to the Vancouver Canucks, was getting paid by them, but he was playing for the Marlies. In- I don't understand that. Why would the Marlies want that? Why would you not want to have your own players get that development? I'm not even sure. I think it was just because he's an Ontario guy and Jason Spezza, who is, I believe it was Jason Spezza. I'm probably wrong on that, but well, I, believe I believe it was you. him. Say it confidently. I, I, I'm saying as confidently as I can. I just don't know how right I am. And I don't want other people spreading nonsense, especially when they can easily <laughs> Google it like myself, but I didn't. So big L on my part. Any ideas who else he played for? Okay. So the Phantoms, Um, I'm, I'm going through the teams he was on. So he's been on... <sighs> It wasn't the Jets. Um, who are the Red Wings? Rochester Americans? No. Nope. I'll just give it to you. It's the Bakersfield Condors. I even said. Did uh, you say Condors? Yeah. No, you said Comets. Okay. I said, no, I said he didn't. I said he probably didn't play for the Condors. No, it was because only four Was it games. during his second stint in Edmonton? Yeah, it was. I forgot he went there twice. Oh, yeah. Oh. What a guy. Love Sam Gagne. So, yeah, he's uh, he's been around. Oh, we need to do more trivia. That was fun. Okay, well, you know what? If you liked it, I assume everyone else liked it. We'll uh <laughs> everyone can laugh at how poorly I did there. Yeah. I'm I'm actually proud I got the Phantoms. Yes, that that one I would not have had. I forgot that he played in Philly there. Yeah. Whole 53 games and Arizona. That guy He played in Arizona? He did. He played a whole 81 games in Arizona. What year? 2014 15 he left the oil oh is that no no they went they went uh to the conference finals in 14 right they've been the year before i thought it was like 2012 they went to the conference finals wasn't it they played like chicago in that one Uh, maybe yeah um Um, i want to look that up was it two it it might have been 2012 I think you might be right there. Ooh, look at me. Just a blind nut or a blind squirrel can find a nut every now and then. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. So like, as we move into the new year, what's one thing you'd like to see the jets get better at? One thing I'd like to see the jets get better at in the new year. Yes. Um, Staying healthy, staying healthy. Fair. I, I mean, I, I I'd like to see a lot less lucky wins and just more confident wins out of this team. Yeah. I, uh, well, I, I don't know if I'd call a lot of the wins they're getting lucky. I think it's Connor Hellebuck. <laughs> yeah. Like the luck is in Connor Hellebuck. But it, yeah, but it's not even like he's making like sketchy saves all the time or like having five posts tonight, even though last night he had two three two or three either way he's just he's just playing good hockey well and like he's getting a lot of outside chances which makes it a lot easier to watch him play that's true but uh as looking at the boston goaltender swayman who's their starter uh olmark olmark okay um 
I think that guy probably wins Vesna, but I'm still on Connor Hellebuck. I don't know. I if Connor Hellebuck comes close to the heart, he's winning the Vesna. See, and like I would argue the other way, where it's like I think he could win heart easier than he could win the Vesna. No, what? Yeah, I I, I think he's the second best goaltender in the NHL. You're the MVP. Year. Uh, listen, I know it makes no sense. I know it's logically stupid to say what I'm saying. I understand that, but I just don't think that he's he, he he's not the best. He, he's the number two goaltender. I'll admit that, but he's but the he's, most valuable to his team. Yes, is there what we you're go. saying. Thank you. See, I don't I don't even think they go off of most valuable to your team anymore. I think they just go off of most points essentially well yeah when most of the gets the heart coming out year. of toronto and boston yeah it's what you yeah with. i i i think he's got a good shot at the vesna i don't know about the heart if if he keeps this up down the stretch you never know but he's got to at least be a vesna finalist if not the vesna winner oh yeah um we'll see how all mark lasts down the stretch like boston can't keep up how they've been playing I don't know. Didn't they do it in 2000 or like Vancouver did it back in 2011 where they were just on an unstoppable. Yeah, that's true. And then they lost to Boston. Yeah. So now we'll have a Canadian team, Winnipeg, beat the unstoppable Bruins in the finals. Seven games and then the city of Boston will burn to the ground. Exactly. And in 10 years, we can do the exact same thing in Winnipeg. (laughs) Yeah. Get all. And we probably would. We would dis- like this level, this city would be leveled. Everyone be like, what happened to Manitoba? It's like, it just doesn't exist anymore. It's just gone. <laughs> Winnipeg destroyed the entire place. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to be worried about World War Three. It's like, no, just Winnipeg had a moment. They won the cup. <laughs> just a civil war. <laughs> that would be absolute nonsense. Uh, last year, what was more heartbreaking for you, losing cop or losing Stastny? Cop, cop, nice. yeah, like for year over year. You mean, I think, yeah, this is gonna be a bad take, but Comrie, oh, yeah, I liked Comrie. He was, I do <laughs> like Riddich though. Yeah, he seemed, he's just a goofy guy. Well, my favorite video of him is kicking the soccer ball at PLD and then just well, laughing. There was another away. one last night where he and, and Connor were doing it and he did that same little giggle. <laughs> he's just, he's having a good time. He's but having uh, a great time. No, I, I would say probably cop there. He's a, like, I don't know. He's a younger guy. He's yeah. going to play in more situations than Stastny was. Um, I think we could use a winger that can go up and down the lineup that can also play center rather than just a pure center. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I just, I guess Kopp, Kopp was a center, but he played more winger in Winnipeg than he did center. So. Yeah. And I mean, like he and Larry were just magic together. So <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, I miss them both and you're right. Comrie is the guy that I missed the most out of everyone that was a jet last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow. Uh, do you like it when Coach Bones is putting the top line out, like when it's just a heavy stacked line and then it's just kind of like, oh yeah, Adam Lowry is now our second second line center? I like it in certain situations. Pardon me. Um, I don't like it for an entire game because you just can't, you need the depth. Yeah. Like, yeah, when when it's getting late in the game and you need a goal, absolutely. Right now, obviously, with all the injuries, but I don't know. I I, I was excited to see that line, but I just don't think that like you need to spread out the scoring a bit more. I also yeah. don't even know if I agree with having Lowry on. I I guess I like Lowry on the second line with Shifley. Okay, yeah, because um, that gets to my next question of would you like? Do you want to see Lowry on your second line because? I, ideally no yeah you'd rather have him in that third line center spot but right now i think it has to be him um i would argue though there are guys who are going to provide a little more offense alongside shifley but lowry's been good like lowry's been scoring a bit this year so yeah um, i mean like the other night against who was the team that he took the puck up and they scored it right after was that van Coo? no it was a loss 
crap. I, can't I don't remember. know. I worked, I worked early a couple times this week. I watched like the first period of games. And then that's fair. It was a game. It was in the first period. I can't remember which night it was. It was, I, uh, but Larry had a breakaway on during a shorthanded break. And then the puck goes right back down the ice. I just like, Oh, the J- it was Minnesota. It was the Minnesota. Oh yes. Game. And you got hooked. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to take 45 God, minutes. the refing's been bad. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. We haven't, like, the the high stick in the uh, Capitals game on PLD, then the high stick in the Minnesota game on Connor. Yeah. Like, how are, how are the refs missing these? Well, and didn't the ref put his arm up initially in Minnesota? And I was like, yes. Aw. It was a four-minute penalty in a one-goal game. Yeah. Two? I, I think it was two at that point, but you had – four minutes like four more or less four minutes of play left and you had potentially a six on four for four minutes yeah that was an absolutely egregious non-call you know and i wish that bonus would just be like or you know chevy would call up bonus and be like just rip into the nhl i'll pay your fine because yeah we're getting to this point where it's like that's cost the jets at least two games uh yeah i, I don't know if i'd say it cost some games but it, it put games away that were very like in reach yes yeah okay i can agree with that and uh, yeah the the other one like the guy's stick was inside pld's visor very clearly yeah how do you not make that call i don't know and it's just like and i've been saying this for a few years where they need to do it like rugby where they have a head referee that's not on your playing surface at all and he's watching from above and he's yeah and then he's in the ear the problem is there's so many little hooks and but when you can directly see something as a guy from up top and you're just like, yeah, that's pretty egregious. I'll put a hold on that. And I would almost prefer that there was, you know, 24 minutes of pow- of uh, penalties because really, if you're going to have an infraction, they learned how to stop doing it after the 04 lockout. They can do it again. Yeah, that's true. So I, I, I just wish that they would just go hardcore on these and if your team loses 6-1 because you drew too many penalties sucks to be you be more disciplined yeah i i also what i hate is the delay of game penalties how they're not reviewable because that is the easiest it's not uh, it's not judgment it's black or white did someone else touch the puck did the puck touch the boards it should take 30 seconds they should look at it and make that call correct every single time yeah because didn't one of the jets make contact with the puck last night uh that probably shouldn't have been a penalty no no it was kind of that one was actually kind of tough to see but yeah i i I, like it's it would just be so it's game changing potentially yep for a a penalty that's not going to hurt anyone and and it's not a judgment call like a, a hook or a hold or a slash that's a judgment call because where do you draw the line it's different with everyone it's harder to tell High sticks are not a judgment call. That's super black and white. Yep. As is puck over the boards. Yeah. Yeah. I have no issue with that. And it's like, yeah, judgment calls are judgment calls. I have no issue with that because a ref can only see so much. And that's another thing is I've heard players complain about having four <laughs> officials on the ice, which is totally fair. I'd be upset about it too, especially if they're getting in the way of me dumping the puck. Yeah. I also like... It was, was it one of those, either the Minnesota or the Washington game, Stenlin got tripped by, oh no, it was Boston. Yes. Stenlin got tripped by Forbert in the middle of three guys and then got a high sticking penalty as he fell. Yeah. What the hell was and that? Then, like, and I understand. Oh wait, no, like, PLD was not in the Capitals game. The PLD stick was in the Boston game. Yes. That was it. It was right at the start of the third. Yeah. Because and it, it was, was that same game. And it's like, how do you call the guy getting tripped, but not the clear well and it's like i understand you gotta call like you have to be in control of your stick at all times yes like, letter of the law fine call it's the a trip two then yeah then call the trip two as well and i'll agree i'll agree with that i have no yeah, issue with absolutely it. send them both but yeah that's the one thing is like the nhl needs to go in and learn how to make these calls black and white especially goaltender interference like how like in the playoffs how many times has that screwed teams over where it's yeah. like, well, Calgary should been should have been the 2004 Stanley Cup. Well, oh no, that's a different story. Never mind. Um, that was that was foot in the crease, right? Was, but, uh, no, that was no, that yeah. was 99. Yes, it was foot in the 99 crease. 99 or 2000, whatever. The, that 99. was Buffalo. Either way. Um, but that that's when Dallas won the cup, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it took them like that's three 99. hours to determine this. Uh, yeah. 
but, 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 but I mean, like the Oilers in 17, like, sorry, we got to talk more Oilers, but like that screwed the Oilers and the offside in last year's playoffs when Connor McDavid was offside, but not really. It was just like, what is going on here? Well, like in 2017 against Vegas, was it Reeves like broke his stick over Hellebuck's head yeah. in the playoffs and then they scored and it wasn't, how is that not a penalty? Yeah. So it's like, just make it black and white. Have somebody that's off the ice and removed from the game. Who's not going to get chirped by players to be like, all right, we're going to make this game as even as possible. Like, I don't think it it should be a head referee that has zero interaction with the players. Like I want somebody that's neutral as possible, who does not care about hockey. He just wants to call a good game. I want some accountability. I want the refs to have to sit down in front of the media after games. That, that is answer their answer for their choices. The players have to, the coaches have to. So let's get the refs out here because it would be nice to know a little bit more about the refs. Yeah. Why did you put your arm up and then put it down on the Kyle Connor high stick? Yeah. So like the refing association really needs to get their crap together. Cause I am, this is, that's going to kill this game of hockey for a lot of fans. Like I know lots of people who've stopped watching hockey because it's they doing can't. it in foot. It's happening in the NFL this year. The refing has been so, so egregiously bad that lots of people are just pissed off with the product on the field. Well, do you remember when uh, the refs in the NFL like went on strike? I think it was like 10 years ago or something. Yeah. Like and, that. It and it was so like, bad. Yeah. It was two well, weeks of bad refing, and like people were like, we're going to take our college refs. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what the issue is? The NFL multi-billion trillion dollar organization doesn't have full-time referees. These guys are lawyers and teachers and shit during the week. And then they go and ref NFL games, pay the guys. Get yeah. full-time refs I and thought, get it right. I thought their guys were making like $80,000 a year. The refs nope. are not full-time. I mean, they only, it's 18 weekends a year. And then, well, no, because there's, so it's 21. It's still, it's half a year. Yeah. Essentially. But still, you make so much money. Pay these guys and make sure they're good in the off season. Have them do camps and shit. Yeah. And well, just like, e- even if they are lawyers too, it's just like, bring them in for a week of just like, here are all the rules. I know you guys have done this before. Cause like when I was pipe, well, they, they definitely do that. Yeah. Well, it, but it's, it should be done on a more regular basis. Well, yeah. Like, I'm, go I'm sour the because the refs early whistles have taken three touchdowns away from the Vikings in not last week, but the two weeks before, which is just absurd. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, so I'm a little sour because of that. Your poor Vikings with their amazing record by winning games by just one score. It's been stressful. I could imagine. I mean, last night's what buck 19 Oilers and Jets. I was stressed as like, I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> All right. Uh, I kind of asked you this question earlier this week, and then I've changed it because I needed to. You can have one former Jet 2.0 re- or join the Jets at a $2 million price tag, but you lose your license for an entire year. The biggest plug that you have ever played hockey with is going to show for you, but he doesn't complain about it. He will do it, but you have to pay for gas as well. What? Okay. You that was a- too many things in one. Okay. Okay. So on a hypothetical, you have you lost get- your license. Okay. Mark Shipman and Heather Stephenson have worked together. Like we're going to get scientists involved, go back into time. We're going to grab one former jet 2.0 for you in their prime, in their prime, but you have to pay them $2 million of cap space. So basically all of the jets cap space at this point, and you lose your license. And the biggest plug that you've ever played hockey with is your chauffeur for the next year. You're not allowed to drive. This is a really easy answer. Is it still yes? It's Dustin Bufflin. Yeah, that's fair. Joe it has Dustin to be buff. Bufflin. Can you imagine putting prime buff on the Jets right now? He and Morrissey is the top pair. And even if you were to take like 36-year-old Dustin Bufflin on this team and just like, go work out for two weeks there, pal. We'll pay you. I think you'd need more than two weeks right now. Probably. But I mean, hell, give him a month. No, I, I would say if you take prime buff, ooh, running around just dummying guys 
and skating in circles goals? and and him on the point on the power play just ripping shots it's good to think about so you're allowing the biggest plug you've ever played hockey with to drive you around for a full year i would hate it but it, it would if it would get the Jets a cup for, for the greater good. <laughs> yeah. All right. I respect it. I think I could pull it off. Depends how much he vapes and what he vapes. It might be my big issue. Might start walking around everywhere at that point. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's, it's dolphin for you. It's like 15 minutes to get across town, no matter what. Walking? Okay. It's like 25 minutes walking around that town. It takes me but... 40 minutes to walk to work. Oh, yeah, because the one or two times that I ran from where your place is to work, it took me 25 minutes. <laughs> At like 2.30 in the morning? Uh, no, there was one time when my car died at Darnell's house, which is just up the road from yours. Uh, I was going to go into work at like 11 o'clock, and my car was dead, and I ran from 11.20 to 12.55 to just make it into the building on time for my shift. Jeez. Yeah, it was uh it was Christmas last or uh, New Year's last year, so it was cold out. So like I just froze right up. I was like, man, this is a rough day to be running to work. I remember that. New Year's Day? Yeah. I remember because I was leaving. I worked that morning. Oh yeah. And I was leaving right when you got there and you you were coming up with your beard just like white. And I was yeah. like, dude, next time just call me. Yeah, I felt a little bit dumb running to work, but hey, I made it. Good old dolphin. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's pretty much all I've. I mean, we've got uh, let's uh, tee up some hockey games this week, and then we'll talk about the Florida Panthers and the Jets with my dumb tweet. Um, because yeah, the Jets have three games this week. I believe we got Tampa Bay, then not Vancouver, Calgary first. Uh, Calgary, Tampa Bay, and Vancouver are the next three games. Ooh, that's a good all week. at home. All at home. That's good. I like, I, I'm excited for the Calgary game. Like battle, like the Prairie games are some of my favorite all year long. Tampa Bay should be fantastic. Cause that's a juggernaut team. It should. Yeah. That should be a good hockey game. Or at least a team just past their prime. They're still pretty damn good in Vancouver. And, well, and I mean, Calgary's starting to heat up now. Yep. Yeah. Like they were cold for a while, but they're, uh, I mean, they're third in the Pacific 43 points in 38 games. Yeah, they've really picked it up since the start of the season. And it's like, I, I'm i still talking, or I don't talk to the Jet, uh, Flames Nation guys, but I am still a part of their group chat. And just watching them talk about the Flames, like, it's just like, ooh, they don't love that team a whole lot. Like it, it, they've been so wildly inconsistent. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's tough. You're, you're getting in, like, you moved out your best two forwards. Mm -hmm. And then you're bringing in two guys you... Like they're gonna need time to figure out how to gel, how to how to work together, all these new guys. But uh so let's say win against Calgary. Thank you, Connor Hallibuck. Uh we're gonna go. I think it's going to OT against Tampa. Yeah, that's a fair assumption. Uh Calgary is five and five in their last ten. So it's like they, they've just been wildly inconsistent. Mm -hmm. We also might see some Jets back this week. I think Perfetti's getting close by the sounds of it. it feels uh, like, like the guys e were all skating. Yeah, Ehlers and we uh, Ehlers and Wheels were both in non-contact uniforms. And and Menelainen, I think maybe Schmidt. Like they, the Jets post a bunch of pictures of guys. of all the injured guys. And like with Ehlers, it's like that guy. It should be skating right now because he's had his time to heal. So that's fantastic. I feel like he's only a week or two away, if that. So let's see. We got Wheeler, Ehlers, Schmidt, Perfetti, and Menelainen all in non-contacts practicing together. That was two days ago. Yeah, so. So guys are going in the right direction. Yeah, even if we're going to give them like minimum of a week, we could have someone back for Vancouver. Yeah, which and is I, the game we need someone back for the least. Yeah. But I mean, but, got, yeah, I mean, looking really far ahead, we got Detroit, Buffalo and Pittsburgh. If we could get wheels or Ehlers back for one of those three games, like I'm feeling a lot more confident. Yeah, yeah, I I, I mean, the Jets need to have a good January. We need to keep up by the top. Um, So let's say 
Yeah, let's let's say two zero oh, and one this week. Two zero oh, and one. Beat the two Canadian that. teams and maybe an OT loss to uh, Tampa. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm just gonna be a bummer here. One one and one. So, but all the games are by well, obviously, like the overtime loss. But every goal, every win is by one. So beat Vancouver by one. Yeah, I think Vancouver is going to be pissed off the fact that we've just dummied them the last three. Like, okay, and then game, overtime loss to Calgary, loss to oh, to yeah. the Lightning. Yeah, actually, I was going to say the uh, uh, loss straight up to the uh, Calgary Flames. Because like when you Jacob like that Martin, the Jets have a couple days off between games. Yeah, it's it, it was it was a marathon. I was just starting to get tired watching, like not tired of watching this team, but I was starting to lose steam with this team. So. Yeah. I like the days off. Two two games this week. I guess three. Then, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. Yeah. Afternoon game next Sunday too. Very nice. I like those afternoon games. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, it's great stuff. Okay, and then let's uh, talk about those Florida Panthers and the Winnipeg Jets because, like, I'm really keeping an up an eye on this. People have been asking me about it. So, currently. The Winnipeg Jets are sitting ninth in the NHL with 47 points. Those Florida Panthers with Paul Maurice, do you want to guess what spot they're in? Or are you looking at that right now? I'm looking at it right okay. now. Okay. Well, they, they're they 23rd in the NHL with 36 points. Yeah. I'm you enjoying watching the fall of Paul Maurice and just like. I, I He's a nice enough guy. He's just I'm not sure a good coach. Yeah. And I mean, if you're going to have a job in the public light i just want to mock you a little bit when i had seen the writing on the wall before some other folks yeah i was calling for that for a while if i'm being honest yeah i think a lot of jets fans where i just i want to be selfish and say i got it right because i called he needed to be fired two days before he did so yeah <laughs> you it, and everyone else in the city of winnipeg yeah right <laughs> no i had an article go out uh, two days before he uh walked away from the jets Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe he saw the article and he thought this guy's right. This guy is right. He was one of my 500 site uh, site visitors that day. <laughs> All right, Samuel, uh, where can we find you on the internet and listen to you on the AM radio where airwaves? <laughs> uh, yeah, on Twitter, it is SBrownL12. On Instagram, it is Sam Brownell Radio. And on the airwaves, it is 7.30 on your AM dial pretty much anywhere in Western Canada or 7.30ckdm.com. Yeah, you can uh, really listen to 7.30 CKDM up to Saskatoon at least. So no, good to in. know. Yes. And, and if some places in Winnipeg will get it. Yes. If it's a uh, clear day. If it's a clear day or you're listening at night, you can listen on the northwest side of the city. <laughs> there you go. Go listen Perfect. to Sam. Uh, for myself, uh, Angus Hout, Instagram and Twitter, would love the support. Uh, check out JetsNation.ca, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Uh, I'm going to have a State of the Nation kind of mini episode come up later this week just to let you guys know what's going on with Jets Nation and myself and where we want to go with 2023. So big things are hopefully coming. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, 2023. We got some big goals for ourselves. I've got happy, big goals. I haven't told Sam what they year. are. And happy new year. Enjoy yourself. Peace and grace, friends. And we'll talk to you again next Sunday. Bye.